Hello, Stronger Together. Give me just a minute here just to make sure that this is going where it needs to. Um, any coaching call members, definitely join me in the Zoom link that was emailed out to you. If you don't have it, you can message me here and I should be able to let you in from over here as well. But anyone can ask questions from anywhere. So even if you're just in the Facebook Live, feel free to ask questions there. I'm going to be bouncing between the two. So I can see you in both. And my name is SJ. I'm a certified crystal healer, shamanic earth medicine practitioner who specializes in earth and energy medicine. Um, I really marry the old ancient wisdom with that of new age sciences like quantum physics, kind of bringing the two houses together in a more digestible format. So that is just a little bit of background on me. Uh, this is the Ask Me Anything. So you can literally ask me anything metaphysical, anything about me. I may or may not answer those depending upon what they are, but anything that you're seeking guidance on, this is really the time and space for you to ask those questions as well. Um, some of the questions were submitted um, ahead of time. So I will make sure and go do those right now. Jamie, I think these were yours. I don't know if you're on yet. But give me just a second, Jamie. I'm going to pop over here. Everybody else who's joining me here within Zoom, feel free to say hello. Come off of mute so the people can hear you. Uh, the video is pinned. So in the Facebook Live, they're only going to see me. So you don't have to look fancy on camera because they can't see you. But they can hear you. <laughs> hello. Hello. Hi, Joni. Hello, Shannon. <laughs> So how, how did it go this weekend? Amazing. We had the best time. Awesome. Yes. Just need to get over that first time home. Yep. And <laughs> she was fine all the whole time. So went well. Awesome. Good. I asked her, are you ready to go home yet? Not yet. <laughs> so, that works. So Great. that's what I said. I will take that. Yep. All right, Jamie, you submitted questions ahead of time. So I'm going to do those first. And then Joni and Shannon, anybody else that joins in here, drop those questions in the Facebook though. Anybody who has questions, drop them there and I'll be bouncing between the two. So Jamie, oh, such good questions. So I'm going to do your second question first, spiritual development and guidance book suggestions. Anything, Cindy Dale. Um, this is probably the one, if you haven't uh, had any from her before, this is the one I would go with, which is the energy healing for trauma, stress, and chronic illness. Uh, this is what it looks like. This, when did she publish this? This one, I think has been out for a few years, Jamie. So there may be some updated ones. Let me take a look here. And let me just take a look at this Facebook to make sure it's doing the thing that it's doing. All right. So, yeah, I don't know for sure if this is the most recent one. This one was, the second printing was in 2020. So there's a couple of them. I think I have the first edition, Jamie, though, and it doesn't, they don't matter, honestly. Um, this is one of my favorite books. Uh, Cindy Dale will go into, like, what trauma is. What's, what is the difference between uh, trauma, stress, and chronic illness? And then what are their links? So this book is really kind of going to give you the big picture of how those three are tied together. Oh. And then you're also going to get um, specifically energy options to go ahead and clear it on your own as well. So you're going to get quite a bit within this book. Another one of hers that I did not grab <clears throat> is the Advanced Chakra. Advanced Chakra book is also by Cindy Dale. It's a massive book. I think there's like mm, 5,000 pages to it. But if you are into the chakras and want to know all about them, that's the one that you're going to want to look at. She does talk about the transpersonal chakras, 
but she labels them different than I do. So if you get that one uh, and you're like, oh, which one is the first transpersonal? What's the earth star? What's the second in hers? And you're not sure you can message me and I can help you guys figure out which ones are which. But she does talk a lot about those transpersonal chakras and how they relate to. Those are two of my favorite books. I also, if you are in the crystal healing jam, <laughs> anything Robert Simmons is gonna be really good too. Um, this one, I really love Stones of the New Consciousness. This is where you start to see, he, like me, works in a lot of shamanic practices. So he journeys with the stones just like I do to really get a feel for what their energies are. So my theory and a lot of other people's theories that they're taking a look at now is that as the earth energies have shifted and changed, so has the crystal correspondences for specific crystals. So some of the older books that were first published, when you read those, if you've worked with your crystals, you might be like, I don't get that at all from my crystals. Hi, Scarlett. <laughs> um, but if you are kind of reading those books and you just are like, this doesn't resonate with me. It doesn't feel like this is what amethyst does or this is what citrine does or really the transpersonal chakra stuff like the Apophyllites, you're not going to see a lot of that in those older books. Robert Simmons, however, really has done a lot of the same practices that I have of let's journey with them and figure out what they do. And then let's test our theories and work with them. So you're going to get a lot more newer data on crystals from his books. I really, really like this one, the Stones of the New Consciousness, <clears throat> because they're specifically looking at healing, awakening, and co-creating. So how to actually work with them. So instead of you just getting info like Moldavite is the master healer and accelerator, you're going to get options with his books on what to do with it. How do you work with it? Is it toxic? Is it not toxic? What can I do? Um, but it focuses, this book specifically for me, there's a lot of transpersonal chakra stones in here that I don't think you get um, from other books. So hopefully that makes sense on that question. Those are the two main ones that I would look at, Jamie, for books is in authors, Cindy Dale and Robert Simmons. Uh, those are my two go-tos if you're looking for stuff. Um, if you're really wanting um, like shamanic journey or um, earth medicine stuff, go with Cindy Dale. If you want to learn more about how to work with crystals and what to do with them, how to work with them, where they're newer, um, energies lie, go with Robert Simmons. So those are the books. And then I think you had one more, Jamie. What is the other one? Suggestions on shadow work and tools to help process this. So uh, shadow work is one of those that I feel like it's been made out to seem like it is something more than what it is. Shadow work is honestly working patterns and releasing traumas that create patterns that make us do or react in ways that are not beneficial to us anymore. Uh, and one thing with shadow work uh, that I always really like to just not even caution people, but just be aware when you're doing shadow work and you're working through traumas, I think it's really important to have compassion for ourselves and recognize that we created these patterns and we created these responses in a time of survival. So we created them in order to survive. And there may have been actual life and death situations that came up for you that had you not created that shock bubble and that trauma pattern in that moment, you may not have survived that. So I think that's important to understand with our shadow work. Now, if you believe in past lives, a lot of shadow work and trauma can come in from past life experiences as well, and certainly unconscious patterns. So a lot of trauma can happen even while we're in the womb, you know, uh, conception, and then younger, where consciously we're not going to remember any of that stuff. So I just want to give that caveat to shadow work is nothing more than working patterns and releasing trauma patterns and cycles. So for me, um, Jamie, you have access to all of the Stronger Together info. So there's there's at least two that I can think of that are labeled trauma, releasing trauma. But when you start to think about trauma patterns and shadow work, I mean, there's so many different versions of this, right? 
So any of those ancestral, like cleaning up uh, current life patterns with mom, cleaning up past life patterns with dad, there's uh, those lives are included in the Stronger Together uh, coaching community. Those are all still shadow work. Any journey that I've taken you on, there's an aspect of shadow work that we're doing. One that I really like is the journey uh, to get to know you, to meet you. Um, that's one where you'll see a lot of shadow work come up. And every time you do that journey, you're going to find something different. So for me, it's kind of a loaded question because I really feel like anytime you're working on breaking cycles and patterns, you're really doing shadow work. So any of those tools that we give you to do, uh, like the shamanic journeys, the energy alignment with Janessa, the energy psychology, even the crystal healing layouts that I've done with you guys as well, that's all working shadow work. Uh, so those are all tools. Now, when we bring up trauma and we start releasing it, there truly can be an, a secondary trauma response that can happen if we're not you know, ready to process <clears throat> or it wasn't truly our priority or we didn't get all of the things. So that's where we start to go into our toolkit where we would start looking at grounding crystals. If we're looking at crystal healing harmonizers. Um, so like the Shungite with the soapstone, the Shungite with Shara White. Um, you guys saw me put myself into almost a trauma response when I was working with the Shungite and Shara White crystals because I had done no prep work. So, I mean, you guys got to see that live last month uh, where I could tell like, yeah, I haven't prepared for this to work through this. I'm going to over amplify this energy that I wasn't ready to process. And that's when you're going to start looking at things like UFO holding that Janessa has taught us. Also tapping that she has so graciously provided us in a lot of sessions as well to help move the energy. Because what you don't want to happen is that you create a secondary shock bubble is what my modality calls them. And then you have a secondary trauma response, essentially, where you have another trapped self that you need to process. You want to let the energy flow and release. So it's important to do the prep work. When you go into trying to work any trauma, whether it's by yourself or with someone else, making sure you're hydrated, number one. I love any type of grounding and energy flow exercise. So like the God spot activation journey that I gave you guys in Stronger Together is a good preparatory one. Um, and then also the light column activation. Uh, for me, from an energy medicine standpoint, if a trauma response is happening or it's not quite releasing as easily, that's when I would start using those universal scalar waves and just ask for those to come in and help free up that energy, keep it moving, get it to flow out, and then even possibly moving into the personal streams, which I gave you guys, I think last week. <laughs> yeah, I think last week is when we activated personal streams. So Jamie, I hope that answers your questions, but if it doesn't, um, pop in, drop in the chat, and I can take a look at that too. I have some of you on here live with me as Zoom. If you have any questions, you can feel free to come off of mute and ask. I have some of you on here live. And then in the chat, I see Amanda. Welcome, Alexis. You're in the Facebook chat as well. Welcome. And Janessa's in the house. So you also have her in there probably answering questions as well. Do you have a crystal that you would recommend for a child? that is very territorial over, over like, okay, at my daycare with me and any yeah. other child hugs me or grabs me or wants to play, it just upsets him so bad that he is just like a mess. Is there a crystal that could help with that? There is. And I mean, there's a crystal for everything, right? There's a million right. of them out there. But the thing to is start to kind of assess when you start looking at territorialism is it's typically a fear-based response. It's that I'm afraid of the sense of loss of security and safety is typically what's coming in. You're probably their safety and security spot. And when they see somebody else coming in, they feel that desperation energy of I'm about to lose that safety and that security. So it's less about working the territorialism and working that sense of safety and security, which is all root chakra. And with that, okay. I mean, the childhood development, I would go take a look at that course that you have in Stronger Together and do the root chakra. Look at the root chakra. There's a million recommendations in there for crystals. Um, but first and foremost, anything, just to make it easy, anything red, 
anything red or black right. is going to be pretty good. Oh. Um, I would look towards hematite to start with. And I really, really like epido, which is not, gr which is not red or black. It's green, mm -hmm. but epido is a really good one. If they're having anxiety come up with, um, that okay. fear-based response, because basically you want him to come out of that fight, flight, or freeze, because that's what's happening, right? right? Is he moves right. into the fight response of, I have to right. fight to claim it, to keep it. Literally. Mm -hmm. So you just want him to come out of that. So I would even look towards like the hematite, the epido. Um, I like actually bloodstone quite a bit as well. Oh, and okay. then pyrite. Anything pyrite will be really, really good as well, especially if you have one that's the cubic. That cubic shape, just from a okay. sacred geome geometry standpoint, is going to add more foundation and structure, which is all root chakra. So, did that help? Okay. Yes. Thank okay. you. Um, and with that, too, with a daycare, especially because you're mostly working with kids five and under, you are looking at people whose um, functioning is really only functioning with the root and the sacral in that time span. Oh, so anything that is red, black or orange, like those are their two processing centers that have developed at that time span. So, I mean, even playing like I know within that um, childhood uh, development chakra revisitation course there are meditations included or journeys included with each one of those you could even play that at nap time just to help okay. them you know drive into that too but focus specifically idea. on root and sacral root and sacral red mm -hmm. and black and orange okay and orange okay thank you you're welcome any other questions I'm um I'm going to a, a conference this next week, and you know I I got my plan laid out. You know, light column activation that you know, and how how I work through little bursts of anxiety, or if I start feeling bouncing off from everybody else. You know, I. But is there anything else that I can add to my repertoire that will kind of help with that? Yes, I would do prep work specifically. So prep work first. Um, and specifically with that, uh, let me see if this will work. Sorry, hold on. I think something is flipping. Okay. Uh, so prep work is going to be more important to where I would do the well, the last meditation that we, or last journey that we did in there, I would do that to activate personal streams, but I would also call in the universal streams. Um, I can find exactly which one I introduced the universal streams to you guys in Joni, and then tell you which one that is in the Stronger to uh, Together coaching call community. But I would call in the universal streams just to make sure that you're functioning in a manner where you're not going to get overwhelmed. It's all going to flow easily without any issues uh, through that. So I would look at that, do the universal streams, and then also do the personal stream ones from last week as well. Alexis, yes, I'll find exactly which one that is so that you can just modify it to open to the universal streams for sure. We can do that. Um, and then also with that, the boundaries, right? I would just boundary to anyone and everyone you're going to come into contact with specifically um at the conference you don't have to know exact names just reinforce the boundaries so go do that boundary one as well with the intention that you're going to have all of your boundaries that physical emotional relational and spiritual boundaries at 100 percent functioning for you so that nothing's going to come in or out of your field that you don't want to okay so i would do prep work if it were me um, just to preemptively deal with it so that you're not dealing with it in the moment. Okay. Sounds good. Uh, and then from a crystal standpoint, I would take gold sheen obsidian and I would have that in your pocket. Okay. You're not going to hear that too often from me, no, but <laughs> um, not regular obsidian specifically gold sheen. Okay. Yep. Um, but I would take that and then just have it like in your purse or whatever so that it's not physically on you. But if you start to feel that overwhelm, you could just grab it. Okay, perfect. In your pocket. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you. You are welcome. 
Anybody else with questions? Uh, I think I got yours, Alexis, in the chat. Yeah, those universal streams. And we can, if there aren't too many questions, we can actually do it here live. I can help you activate those universal streams live in this one too, so that you have it. And we can tailor it to specifically conferences. So that, that way you guys don't even have to modify. You can just do this one too. Because I am not seeing any questions in the Facebook. Can you hear me? I don't see any questions. Do you guys want to do that or do you have more questions here? And you're welcome to ask questions and do both. Can you hear me? Uh, barely, Alexis. It's really, really quiet. Can you hear me now? I'll type. If there's, if there's time, I appreciate. Yeah, we'll do that tonight for the conferences. Any other questions before we jump into that? And also, how's the energy going for you guys? How has this week been? Has it been a roller coaster? Has it been crazy? Has it been a tumultuous, <laughs> all of the above? I feel like it's more confusing than tumultuous. I don't feel the tumultuous as well, but the, I don't know what to do, so therefore I do nothing has been kind of a constant uh, for me for this week, which we're going into the full moon on Tuesday. So we have the full moon in Taurus on Tuesday, which is all about sustainability. So also comfort, um, money, finances, all of that are going to be on your mind. Um, but then we also have Mars, Mars that's in retrograde right now too, which is going to cause some upheaval in relationships. So if you've tried to have a tough conversation with somebody about a relationship, it probably wasn't fabulous wasn't fabulously received this week. Also, you're going to see with Mars that people being triggered very, very quickly energy is going to come up. It's going to be interesting. And I feel it actually today um, coming in, especially with Mars being in retrograde, very, very masculine energy, whereas the full moon is very, very feminine. So it's almost like there's this like tug and pull of okay, I'm just going to go for it versus, okay, I'm just going to be open to receive it. But then because we're in that tug and pull between something or a decision, we just don't make a decision at all. We just keep going back and forth, but never actually act on it, which Mars energy is not going to be too happy with us with inaction. So then we start to beat ourselves up of why am I not doing anything? Why, what is wrong with me? Why am I not fixing this? I know how to fix it. Why am I not doing it? So I say all of this just to caution everybody that this is the energy that we're in right now. And a lot of, you know, full moon is that time for release. So a lot of those traumas, a lot of that stuff that needs to come to the surface to move out is going to try to do that right now. And Mars, here's the cautionary tale. Mars is going to want to force it. Mars is going to want to hurry it up, speed it along, and get done with it. Don't fall into that. Give yourself the time and space, however long you need to process. Let that kind of play out. I would say don't make any decisions without muscle testing or penduluming. Check in with those internal guidances. That logical mind is not going to serve us very well right now. And I'm finding that out as well. Right now, you need to rely on your intuition and that connection when you're making all of your decisions just to kind of stay out of that fight energy that Mars brings in. But this is a rough one. This one for me has been quite a lot. I think Janessa said earlier that the two signs that it said were going to hit most was actually Leo um, and Scorpio. So Leos and Scorpios, you might be feeling some of this. All right, let me take a look at this question in the chat. Um, I'm really leaning into building Be Your Awesome, but the fear that I won't be able to make money keeps coming up. But I don't have a product that is worth paying for. Anything you can point me to to help clear this energy? Well, one, that feels like a seduction to me, which I don't know if Janessa is still in here, but does that 
feel like seduction energy to you, Janessa. I also kind of wonder if there's not wounded light worker stuff going on there as well, because I mean, clearly you're a light worker. So are you being toyed with, with the interference patterns just to get you to not move forward and do it? I think we all get plagued by that at different times, especially when we're trying to decide to really move into our full power in the light worker gig as well. Um, I'm ready to commit to leaving full time, but the fears are strong and other than trying and focusing on what's to come. Feelings of what that will feel like. I'm avoiding and I think it's because I'm scared I can manifest it. Well, you can, right? Because you know, you know you can manifest it. So you want to, you're <laughs> almost stagnating in the sense of, I don't want to manifest the negative or the downside of that. So you're doing as much as you can. Um, well, I think it's two-sided with that you know you can manifest but you're also fearful that if you sit in the fear energy that you'll manifest exactly what your worst fear is right because that can happen so yes i mean one if it's seduction or wounded light worker over tangle which i would muscle test it or pendulum it to see if it's either one of those um and then if is it yeah um i honestly would work it with janessa and clean it up so that it's gone and then it's just gone like that's one round and out of there um wounded light worker that's a i hate that pattern like i really despise that because it affects all of us right anybody who's a light worker which if you're watching me you're a light worker let's be real here um <laughs> Uh, that is one of those that is the roughest, but you guys are in luck though, because Janessa is the guru of that and can clean it up for you. Um, that's my thing with that, Alexis. I would work with her and clean that wounded light worker stuff up right away. That's one of those patterns that I don't ever even like to work alone. Um, so even doing that individual, like I can't even give you like here, here are the steps, work it like this, because I don't even think that's a pattern that should be worked by it an individual because it's so deceptive it's such an inner heavy interference pattern that you'll get false positives false negatives all of the crap um yeah and janessa dropped in the chat sounds very dependent business partner coming in hot which is one of the characters of the wounded light worker over tangle so seriously get on her books and get rid of that um yeah it felt seductiony or wounded light worker to me so I can't give you any, like, here's your self-care to clean it up, unfortunately, but I can give you a tool, a tool in your toolbox, which is amazingly, and called Janessa Finley, a fiercely radiant soul, uh, to get rid of it. Um, a crystal, if you want crystal support in this pattern, again, this is not to clean it up, it's to help ward off as much of it as you can. It's the Colorado Amazonite with the Morian Quartz and the Smoky Quartz. Um, those are the, that's the one crystal combination that I have 100% of the time, a grid set up to ward off as much Wounded light worker over Tangle crap as I can. So that's the best I've got though, but Janessa will have you covered and you know how to get in touch with her to clean it up completely. Any other questions? What else you guys got? We're so quiet tonight. All right, then let's go ahead and do <coughs> the universal scalar waves. And I'm just gonna do personal waves with you guys too, so that you have one shot set up for that. So we're gonna set this up for going into specifically conferences or being around large groups of people. How's that sound? Cover all of our bases. All right. So everybody just to take a nice deep breath in. Exhale slowly. And I want you to drop right into the center of that heart chakra, that God spot center. Kind of looks like a spinning sphere or wheel in your heart chakra. And right at the center of that is your God spot. Just feel what that area feels like. The peace, love, sense of safety and security that's there. Now I want you to go ahead and affirm your higher self as I affirm my higher self.
We're going to affirm all of our helping spirits, our ancestors, angels, and spirit guides. Affirming all of those positive helping spirits. And then finally, I want you to affirm that divine source energy, that God energy, by yourself, universe, whatever you want to call that divine spirit energy, just affirm that. You can just feel that sense of comfort and ease flow in as soon as we affirm that source energy. Now that that God spot is open and activated, I want you just to move about six feet above your head. Bring your attention to six feet above your head. I want you to visualize that energy coming down into that crown of your head. Entering that third eye, filling all of that space between both of your temples with that really bright white silver light. And move down further yet into your throat. And now your heart. Filling that entire space there, including that God spot. Move down further yet into that solar plexus, right in between your chest and your navel. Down further yet into your hips, filling all of the space there, leaving nothing untouched. Now further yet into your knees, And now your ankles. Your toes. Now exiting through your toes down into that earth star chakra, about six inches below your feet. Now feel that energy from that earth star flow back up to six feet above your head in a continuously healing and activating loop. And this is where that magic happens. We're just going to activate the universal streams, those absolute scalar waves to come in and protect us and keep our energy as our own while keeping other energy that's not our own and not for our highest good out. Anytime that we're at a conference or with a large group of people, the universal streams are just going to firmly and lovingly reinforce every single one of our boundaries our physical, emotional, relational, finally our spiritual boundary. The universal streams never stop working for us. They're going to continually stay activated and growing and enhancing as we need them to. 
to protect our energy fully and completely anytime we're with other people or a large group or at a conference. And now I'm going to go ahead and ask that for each person participating, whether it be live or on replay, that if it serves your highest good to activate a personal stream or many personal streams, whatever serves your highest good, we're going to go ahead and do that tonight as well. Just going to activate one or more personal streams of grace, whatever is going to serve your being best. I want you just to really sense and feel how that feels in that heart chakra. I feel a lot of you feeling it in your throat. Let it drop down into that heart chakra, that God spot that can fully open there. And while you're in that heart chakra, in that God spot, let's just really feel how those boundaries feel now. So extending from your heart chakra out to just outside your skin is that physical boundary. I typically see this as red. So just kind of feel that auric field around your entire body of the physical boundary, healing replenished and reinforced at 100%. And then extending six inches out from that is our emotional boundary, which I usually see this one is green. So just visualize six inches all the way around your body, that emotional boundary healing replenished and reinforced at 100%. And then another six inches out from that is our relational boundary, which I often see this as orange or pink. So we're one foot away from our body right now. Just really feel that relational boundary healed and replenished at 100% firmly in place in that relational boundary. And now finally, let's go another six inches out from that. So almost two feet away from our body now, we are going to just reinforce, heal, and replenish that spiritual boundary, which I typically see as a really bright white or blue. Just replenishing, healing, and reinforcing that spiritual boundary at 100% so that our boundaries are firmly intact and functioning for us drawing to us only that which we desire and keeping out everything that we don't desire or that doesn't serve our highest good at 100 percent i want you guys to take a nice deep breath in again exhaling slowly When you're ready, I want you to start making your way back to the here and now, knowing that you are fully supported anytime you're in large groups or at a conference now. Those universal streams and those personal streams are going to be working for you no matter where you're at. How's everybody feel? Good. good. I see thumbs up. So I think we're good to go on this end. This is one of those that you can come back to at any time. Doesn't matter if you're watching live or on replay. I think this is one of those that's good for everybody. I mean, we've all probably had those times where we felt overwhelmed at family events, at conferences, at school, um, airports. I mean, airports get me even sometimes. So definitely one that we can come into. Uh, yes, right away. I felt you get to really enjoy this. Be you and not be scared of what will happen to you. You're safe. You're free to be you. Exactly. And yeah, that's one of the things that a lot of learnings will start to just kind of come in. Definitely gather those, reflect on them. 
Uh, learning is always something that Janessa really introduced me to, and I love it because that conscious reflection of what was processed for me is really, really helpful to be able to kind of see where I'm going. What's the next thing I'm going to work on? Where am I looking? What's the trend? It's one of those that, I mean, I like to journal. So I'm a journaler and all those learnings are contained in one journal so that I can see what's trending. What am I doing? I have a very analytical mind as well. So I like to see the trends. Any other questions you guys here on Zoom or Facebook have? If you guys are on Facebook, drop it in the chat from Facebook and I'm happy to answer them from there as well. Any other questions? Are you talking about questions about energy work or tarot questions? Or... Anything. Um, I'm not doing tarot tonight, but this is the ask okay. me anything. So you can ask me any other questions. I mean, you can ask me tarot questions too. I'm sure I have a deck here close. <laughs> You're on mute, Chelsea, if you were still talking. No, I'm, I'm trying to think. I'm taking my too many questions. <laughs> Go ahead, Joni. I'm taking my tarot deck with me. Ooh, I'm excited. Getting into those tarot decks finally. <laughs> uh, I also really connecting with my body, but still having issues with how to move it in the way it wants to be moved. Is there a crystal or healing you can suggest for me? Yes. Let me tap into that energy though. Stuck in stillness. Is it the lack of action? Like you have all these great ideas, but then no follow through? What you think, Jimmy? You can't hear me, can you? Technology is the worst. Oh, it's the desire. Got it. Um, so the emotions specifically, a lot of people think emotions come from the heart chakra. They don't. They originate in the sacral. So every emotional response you have started in the sacral, usually when you get to that point of expressing it is when it's at the heart. So it's literally moved up through the solar plexus and has gotten to the heart before you're ready to just like, oh, I'm going to cry. I'm going to have the outburst, which means it's moved up to the throat chakra if it has become an outburst. But it travels upward, but it always originates in the sacral chakra. Um, desire specifically is also uh, a key sign of uh, sacral. Any desire, passion, all of those specific always have that tied to the sacral chakra. So I would look at the Natanite as the first one, which if you haven't seen it. I think I have one close. I don't know if you can see that, Alexis. This is the Natanite. Um, let me drop it in the chat here. Um, that's one that I would look towards is the Natanite. And then I also like the Mahogany Obsidian. Aragonite. Aragonite is kind of that master healer as far as it functions with any of the chakras specifically. So it will function a lot of them. Um, let me drop those in here. Yeah, it might have really been for you then, Alexis, if you bought that for your son. You need it for you. You knew. <laughs> Work with that one. And then last but not least is Spessartine Garnet on Smoky Quartz. Because you want the staying power. What, um, this is the Spessartine Garnet is the red on the Smoky. You want it to be a, a habit. You want it to be something that you continually do, something that has um, the ability to last. And that's where I really like the Spessartine Garnet on the Smoky Quartzes because it's very root chakra and sacral. 
So it's more foundational. <clears throat> it will just be part of your foundational routine when you start um, just doing it. Uh, so it's one of those, you know, like we've probably all seen the fad diets where they come and go and then you're worse off at the end of that than what you were when you started. You don't want that kind of energy. You want something that truly can fit into your lifestyle. Um, and that's where I really like the Spessartine Garnet on the Smoky. Thank you. You are welcome. Anybody else? All right, friends, I don't see any more questions in here, nor do I see it in the Facebook. So with that, I'm going to let you all go and universal blessings. Have a amazing full moon and the rest of your night. Thank you. Thank you.